Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. The Lord be with you. Well, it's lovely to have you here tonight and we've got a special guest tonight. We've got uh, Crystal. Scarlet, sorry. Scarlet Johansson. Scarlet uh, from, uh, what was that movie, Gone with the Wind? So hopefully you girls will have something to do while we go through the service. Tonight we're going to talk about the crop and the weeds and the crop growing together. You, O oh Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Let us begin by bringing our hearts and our minds to God in prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Let us now come and rejoice in the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the colic prayer for this service. Saving God in Jesus Christ, you open for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us pure hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 28, beginning at verse 10. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord. And he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth and you will spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. 
He was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and put oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, though the city used to be called Luz. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second, uh, the psalm for tonight is Psalm 139, verses 1 to 11 and 23 and 24. Let us read it together. O Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in, behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the, Corinth, uh, to the Romans, chapter 8, beginning at verse 12. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh, to living according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die, but if by the Spirit you put to death, the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you received does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his suffering, in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worthy comparing with the glory that we will, re will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subject to, to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves 
who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we are saved, we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St Matthew chapter 13 beginning at the 24th verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed ears, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling up the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barns. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. And the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age and the harvesters are angels. So the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire. So it will be at the end of the age. The son of man will send out his angels and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my lips and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in our sight, O Lord, our God and Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. So last week we had the sower and sowing on the four different types of soil. We see another analogy of the sower, but this time it's not about the the word In this case, the seed is seen as the people of God. And then this other person comes along and sows seed, and that person is the devil. I've got to tell you, I have a bit of trouble with this. Now, this suggests that some people are born out of God and some were born out of the devil. And there's a whole issue about the devil, by the way. We have to accept in this day and age that there are people who do not believe in the devil. 
and I'm talking about Christians, they believe that there is an evilness in the world, but they do not necessarily believe there is an evil person. And really, it doesn't matter whether you believe in the devil or not to come to this understanding. At this point in time, what we're firstly looking at is the scriptures saying that some people are born, but not of God. Now, by my understanding, God is the creator of all things. So therefore, no creature that is born is anything but a creature of God. So there is no other person or option to being created by God. In that case, well, how do we understand this reading? And what I'd like to look at is that we are not talking about the original person being born out of one person by one person or another. What I believe we're talking about is the fact that in the world there are those who give their life to God and there are those who give their life to the world. If you believe in the devil, there are those who give their life to God, there are those who give their life to the devil. There is this suggestion, though, that that was already decided before they were born. Now, if you're a person who loves theology, uh, deep theology, I should say, not the basic theology, but the deep theology, then you'll probably know about the idea of predestination. Calvin said that there were those people who were destined to go to heaven. They didn't have a choice. It was decided before they were born. In that idea of predestination, the rest of the world fall into two groups. Those that are in the possible go to heaven, though they weren't predestined, and those who were never going to go to heaven. There was another thing called double predestination, which means there is actually only two groups. If you were destined to go to heaven, you were destined to go to hell. They were two ways. We can see how people's understanding and interpretation of scripture has shaped our theology. So I'm going to dare to look at it differently. You see, the, in the end for me, there is about a point at which people enter into a relationship with God and it's not one just done on your own. For me, it's about the Holy Spirit. And it's one of the areas that we haven't talked a lot about so far, as far as our faith is concerned. Where does the Holy Spirit move in this decision of living by grace or living by humanity, the world? For us to actually accept our faith requires us to see something that doesn't exist. You have to believe Jesus is the Son of God. There's no birth certificate to say he's the Son of God. There is no biological reason for him to be the Son of God. So therefore it has to be accepted by faith. And even in the reading from Paul, he talks about a hope that is seen is no hope at all. There is no hope that there will be a tree if you're looking at a tree. There's only hope there'll be a tree when you plant a seed and you have no certainty that it'll grow. But you hope. You have faith. So therefore, for us to accept even the simplest part of our faith seems like a big decision. And we think we make it on our own. But I believe what we do is we actually accept something before we start believing, and that is that there is a, a, a spiritual God. And when we accept that, then we open ourselves to the rest of it. So in the world, there are those who will open their hearts to believe that there is something out there. And at that point in time, their bodies and their minds are guided by that spirit. Those who say there is no spirit, there is no God, then 
cannot accept anything else because their minds are closed. I think this is very important. When we talked about last week about how do we live out this grace, do we live this grace by the power in us? Do we live it out to succeed or to achieve something? And in the end, no, we don't. As we accept that there's something greater out there, we open ourselves to God's spirit. And as we open ourselves to God's spirit, then we are guided into understanding. Now, it is the relationship we have with the Holy Spirit that connects us to our relationship with God and our relationship with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus. So we have to have a relationship with this thing we cannot see that is now inside us. I believe we know it's there, we accept that it's there, but the question is how well do we know it? And if I'm really going to be honest, I've been using the word it because what other word can I use unless I call it a he or a she? And if I call it a he and she, does that not make it slightly strange? There is a person living inside me and I have to have a relationship with this person. And I've talked about it before and, and you may say, I've heard this before, and I'm going to tell you, it's not about whether you've heard it before. It's actually about where you meet it. See, I can hear the same thing a hundred times and it doesn't change how I feel about it. You can tell me it a thousand times, it won't change the way I feel about it. So the question is, put out again, because it is something we need to think about. Do I believe and engage with that Holy Spirit that I have accepted? Have I worked at that relationship? Do I talk to the Holy Spirit? Does the Holy Spirit talk to me? I treat my relationship with the Holy Spirit like I treat a relationship with any person. And I've got to ask myself, how often did I talk with the Holy Spirit today? And there are days when I can honestly tell you I never talk to the... Well, actually, that's not true. I always talk to the Holy Spirit, but I don't always talk to it all through the day. Some days I spend more time talking to the Holy Spirit than on other days. I try to start my day talking to the Holy Spirit. It's a good place to start. And I try to reflect. Now, it's not an easy relationship. You know, you put time into a relationship, how do you know it's successful? And at times I have to say that I'm really not happy with the relationship from the Holy Spirit's side. I've had some prayers that I'm not 100% sure the Holy Spirit has heard or answered and I'm really not appreciative of being not being heard. I have that problem with my wife. I have a problem with the Holy Spirit. I have found myself saying Psalm 22, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I often believe there are times when I wonder where God is. And that has to do with my relationship with the Holy Spirit. Paul, in his letter, talks all about this, that it's not through their own thoughts, their own works, their own deeds, that they believe and achieve what they achieve, but as they engage with the relationship with the Holy Spirit. How is your relationship with the Holy Spirit? When was the last time you talked to the Holy Spirit? When did the last time the Holy Spirit talk to you? How would you define that relationship? Is it like a friend, like a mother, like a father, like a brother, like a doctor, like a lawyer, like a policeman? Each one of us has a unique relationship with God and a unique relationship with the Holy Spirit. And like any relationship, it has to have a beginning. So if we look at it, and I have had many people tell me that their relationship with God is like an acquaintance. They say good morning, and that's the last time they talk to them in the day. If we start, there's no wrong starting point. There's no, when I say to people, what's your relationship like, I never go into, you're wrong. What I say to them is, this is where you are, now where are you going to go with it? Same question to each one of us, even to myself. 
This is where my relationship is with the Holy Spirit, but where do I want to go with it? The hard part too is that the relationship may call us to do things that we don't want to do. And like any relationship, if I'm asked to do something, if I do get an answer that I don't like or a a request that I don't like, there's going to be an impact on the relationship depending on how I respond to that. If I'm asked to do something and I choose not to do it, it always fractures a relationship. And there's a time of healing and commitment to the relationship again. I often say to people who are getting married and even to people who are getting baptised and people who are making confirmations, do you really want to marry God? Are you willing to put the time and effort into your relationship with God that you would put into a marriage? Because if you're not then what are you going into it for? What's your relationship with God like? Amen. We come now in this part of our service to redefine this God and the relationship. Let us affirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, to God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us now pray for the world, the church, and for ourselves. The response to the prayer tonight is at the end of each prayer, I will say, Spirit of God. The response is, hear our prayer. Spirit of God, hear our prayers for your world and for your church. We pray for the peoples of the world, for those oppressed by harsh government, those who live under foreign rule, for those in countries destroyed by war and for the dispossessed. Lord, we pray for all the problems and issues that surround our world because of the COVID-19. For the issues between states in Australia, between relationship issues between Australia and the rest of the world. Problems of issues that other countries have with each other. the problems that people have with each other in their own countries.
Spirit of God, grow in us. Teach us to resolve our differences without violence and cruelty, that wars may cease and all your people. I apologise. The response to the prayer is merciful God. Faithful God, you have promised that there is no place on earth beyond your presence. Hear our prayers for the world and its people. We pray for all who live in places of war and oppression, for prisoners of conscience and for refugees, for the leaders of nations and all who make and administer laws. Search our hearts and lead us in your way that we may work for an end to war and justice and all the disabilities caused by the COVID-19. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Faithful God, you have promised to make us your adopted sons and daughters. Hear our prayers for your holy Catholic Church. We pray for all who will be baptised or confirmed today through all churches throughout the world. For all who suffer persecution for their faith, for those whose faith is weak, for pastors and teachers and all who lead your people, we bring our parish prayer to you. Renew in us, O God, the zeal for your love. Let our parish come alive with the power of your spirit. Where we have failed, forgive us. Where we have persevered, encourage us. Where we are in doubt, direct us. Help us to see new opportunities for witness and service for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Search out our hearts and lead us in your way that by our lives we may proclaim your good news to the world. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Faithful God, you have promised to bless all the families of the earth. Hear our prayers for our families, our friends, and for all who live and work in this community. We pray for all who are hungry or homeless, the marginalised and unwanted, for those with not too little work or too little reward, for all who contribute to the well-being of this community. Search out our hearts and lead us in your way that we may live in love for you and for each other. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Faithful God, you have promised to be with us even in the darkest parts of life. Hear our prayers for all who are in pain, sorrow or hardship. We pray for those who do not know the joy of companionship and love. For those whose minds are anxious and whose hearts are sad. For the sick and the dying and for all who care for them. We bring our prayers for our loved ones. We bring special prayers for Michael Hirschfeld, for Damien Vale, Patricia McMullen, Duncan Pegg, Kenneth Tordovan, Wendy Lindsay, Oliver, Michelle Doherty, Linda and Nola.
search out our hearts and lead us in your way, that we may respond with generosity to the needs of others. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Faithful God, you have promised your people the hope of glory. Hear our prayers for all who have died in this hope. We give thanks for the lives of all good and holy people and remember from this parish those who have gone before us. We remember this week Walter Costello, Isabel Bell Buckley, Keith Hirschfeld, Vera Klavikowski, Alan Farragher, Rose Stockdale, Amy Payne, Adele Donald. Search out our hearts and lead us in the way everlasting that we with all your saints may enter the gates of heaven and dwell forever in your presence. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Jesus said, come to me all who labour and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Let us prepare for our confession through the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh with the tongue of Jesus Christ and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him. God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to the Lord's table. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins. Strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Our relationship with the Holy Spirit unites us We are the body of Christ. The peace and love of the Lord be always with you. Thank you.
and our humanity. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours, always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who, by the power of your Spirit, was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You may be seated, kneel or stand, depending on what your heart desires. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, that we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he'd given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. And again, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. His mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world.
Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son. Bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with, in whom we worship you in the power of the Holy Spirit, in songs of never-ending praise, Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. As this broken bread was once many grains which have been gathered together and made one bread, so may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in, my heart, in our hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Holy Spirit. Body of Christ, keep me in eternal life. Amen. Blood of Christ, keep me in eternal life. Amen. body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life.
let us pray. Bountiful God, at this table you graciously feed us with the bread of life and the cup of eternal salvation. May we who have reached out our hands to receive this sacrament be strengthened in your service. We who have sung your praises tell of your glory and truth in our lives. We who have seen the greatness of your love see you face to face in your kingdom and come to worship you with all your saints forever. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go and with courage in the power of your spirit. Well, thank you all for being here tonight and being able to share this service together. Uh, don't forget, everything you have is yours to keep. Take it with you when you go. Don't leave it at the door. Uh, I pray that you will have a blessed week and that the Spirit will guide you this week. Please be upstanding for the blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace and joy to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen.